I was robbed, both figuratively and also quite literally robbed on Sunday night. It has taken me a few days to collect myself and regroup after a series of insane events in the THHL league. I alluded to some of that in yesterday's video. This is league. This is the league where, if you've watched me from the beginning, I based a lot of the first view, uh, few videos uh, on the channel about developing parts of the draft strategy using some of the data from this league, uh, doing draft recaps about this league, weekly updates at times. So some of you will know some of the cast of this story. But for those new to the channel, this is my main money league, a league that I've been in for almost 10 years with a group of friends. And I'm about to tell you the story of how I was on the wrong end of a collection of miracles. But first, let's take a brief look back at the season. So at the bottom, you see the trade that I made that fixed my early season goaltending issues. Now, I won week one versus Toe Dragons, then lost a couple of weeks in a row trying to figure out my goaltending. Once this trade went through and I picked up UC Soros, my team immediately started to improve and I started to climb from third place to second place to first place over the course of December. By week 11, I was in first place. Now, I have found evidence that I was in first place during week seven and week eight, but this shows you that I lost that lead, dropped to third, and then climbed my way back up to first place in week 11, where I stayed in first place until 9.20 p.m., on the last day of the regular season. So let me tell you the story. Heading into the final day of the season Sunday, these were the standings, and this is what I needed to clinch first. So I'm at 276, Toe Dragons is at 270. He's built a hell of a team, I have to tip my hat. Uh, and he, he had to do everything to pull this off. So let's take a look at it. I needed seven category wins to get to 290. If I got to 290, he could not catch me unless he went 10 and 0, which is uh, extremely unlikely. Uh, but I thought that this would be unlikely. So anyways, if I got to 6-3 and 1 in my matchup, I would get to 289 with a tiebreaker going to potentially me. Uh, and I'll get into that in just a second. But just to be competitive, Toe Dragons needed 9 category wins out of a possible 10 for 288 points, which would potentially tie us. Or if he went 9-0-1, he would get to 289. So if he got to 289 and I did, then there would be a tiebreaker, and that tiebreaker goes to head-to-head -to -head matchups, in which we went 1-1. One one. I beat him 7-2, he beat me 5-4, so it would have been a nail-biter, but I think I would have won the tiebreaker. But why is first place important? This isn't the championship. Why does it matter? Shouldn't I just worry about winning the playoffs? Well, here's the structure for our money league. Now, other than making this my part-time job for the last eight months and pouring a ton of time and effort into building the best team possible, there is money at play here. First place in the regular season wins $150 that, let's be honest, as a small YouTuber, I desperately need. I started this channel to try to help me build my skills, showcase those skills, hopefully try to get a job. I put it in the description of every single video, my LinkedIn account. Uh, and after almost a year of applying, there are no jobs in sight. So this money was going to pay for bills and help keep me afloat. Keyword was. What transpired next is something out of a fantasy hockey manager's nightmares. So as you can see here, the exact scenario needed to allow Toe Dragons to win occurred. Early in the day, Sterling Slapshots, who I was facing, and he's out of the playoffs, he picked up Yaro Halak for no apparent reason because he wasn't going to win the week. Uh, I, he, I was beating him in goals against, so he could potentially take goals against, which he did. But even if he did, I was talking to some guys in the Discord group, we did the quick math, and I realized that all I needed was for Halak to not get a shutout. If he didn't get a shutout, I'd win 6-3-1, and that one category tie would get me to 289 points, a tie with Toe Dragons where I likely held the tiebreaker. And you can hear the cheers build. But it gets worse. Portland Rivercats, last place in the league. He's the guy who picked Vasilevsky seventh and started this whole don't draft a goalie in the first round business. He started his players all week, but neglected to do anything on Sunday. These are the guys that he had still in his active lineup. Forsberg, who's been out for months. Sagan, who's out. Barzell's been out for a couple weeks, and they were all on his active lineup. He Had he placed them on IR and added a couple of players, maybe. Just maybe, he could have chipped away one category win in maybe goals, assists, maybe shot blocks. 
If he had added a goalie, he could have taken wins instead of tying, which also would have clinched first place for me. After the dust settled and reality set in, Rivercats, who is also our league commissioner, did this. He added Brandon Hagel and Ryan Hartman at 9.50 on Sunday night in what seemed to be a clear middle finger to me and an indication that he had tanked on Sunday to purposely help Toe Dragons win and screw me out of $150. Now, I was livid. I was hurt. Despite me razzing him for taking a goalie in the first round, Rivercats is one of my oldest friends, and to think he would do something like this was a complete blindside. Now, I did reach out to him on Monday, and he explained to me that it was not intentional, he was extremely busy, and I do believe that to be the case. So, after that all got cleared up, it did relieve some of the pain. But it does get worse. Even if he didn't set his lineup, Toe Dragons had Vanacek. Rivercats had Vasilevsky. They were playing each other on Sunday night. So at around 8.30 Sunday night, the Lightning are up 2-0 in the second period, and things are looking okay until... Here comes Brad back the other way for the Devils. He scores! Hard cut back. There's the wrist shot. Tip scores! Devils again. It's Heischer. High slot. Heischer shoots. Scores! The defenseman jumping up on the play. But look at where the two D-men are. So he sure who's as good as... But it wasn't just this past Sunday that a collection of miracles conspired against me. The same thing happened in week 21. Before going to bed on Sunday night, I was winning this matchup. Now, Philip Gustafson is one of my goaltenders. This was the week that he got a shutout in a one nothing shootout loss. And that, that was a talk within our uh, discussion about how do you get a shutout if you lose the game. Well, he did. Had he won me that, I would have taken wins, gotten the one extra point that I needed, and won first place. But in addition to that, we both tied in save percentage, 897 with an asterisk. So I asked, how did I lose save percentage when we tied? This was the tiebreaker. It was literally 0. .0003 in favor of Zodiac Braves. And part of that comes down to Tristan Jari, letting in four goals on 12 shots against Columbus and getting pulled. And then on top of all of that, on Sunday, I had Gustafson in against Arizona, and then a miraculous come-from-behind overtime win for Arizona ensued. Comes Jack McBain, little pull-up move to Keller, he scores! Clayton Keller! Clayton Keller, one of the two game winners in OT for Hayden, he shoots, stop, rebounding star, put home, Clayton Keller in overtime. I was robbed, but at least I still get to play for the championship. Ottawa Truckers was arguably screwed even worse. This is the matchup that he was facing, and this matchup was going to determine the playoff seating of Ottawa Truckers and Lake Mohawk Moose. Uh, and what ended up happening, Truckers added Joel Hofer, an extremely risky play on the last day of the season, and it paid off. He got the shutout. But because Joel Hofer went off the ice in a little bit into the second period for a skate repair, and because Thomas Grice made one save, that shutout is not official. It does not register as a shutout in the league's uh, scoring system, and therefore doesn't apply in fantasy either if he got that one point that he's pretty much deserving i mean there's no question about it he should have got that shutout that would have put him in at least a tie if not a win against lake mohawk moose and he likely would have held the tiebreaker as well so he not only gets i get screwed but he gets screwed out of a playoff spot and i believe this is the second time in three years that that something like that has happened to him on the last day of the season so let's pour one out for Ottawa Truckers for having equally bad luck uh, in this particular season and going back a couple of seasons as well. Now, what was the point of this video? As a millennial in America today, it is my God-given right to bitch and complain. That's just what it is. No, but seriously, more importantly, there's still a championship to win. And Paul Coffey said it best. When's the Tiger most dangerous? When he's wounded, I guess so. You know. Thank you for indulging in my misery for the last couple of minutes. If you have any horror stories of your own, leave those in the comments below so I don't feel so bad. I'll be at the Rangers game tonight versus Carolina, which should be an incredible matchup, but there won't be a live stream tonight because of that. I'll be going live one or two more times this week to help you win your fantasy weeks. And as always, I'll see you in the next one.